Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. We're going to talk about this morning two kinds of knowledge. Two kinds of knowledge. Uh, you know, mankind uh, has been trained since, his, uh, since the fall of man uh, to be ruled by his senses. Everybody say ruled by your senses. I am on, right? I'm, yeah, I'm just not hearing myself on. The, sometimes I hear myself bounce off the back wall, but I'm not hearing it, so glory. What is the source of sense knowledge? This is the first knowledge. This is the knowledge we're all familiar with coming into the kingdom of God. We are all sense knowledge ruled people. Say, I, before Jesus, was a sense ruled individual. And in some cases, you still are. So we're going to change that. Amen? Where does that come from? Well, sense knowledge is exactly what we're talking about, the senses. What you see, what you taste, what you hear, what you feel, and what you smell. Your senses are, are where you get information. And because of the way we've been trained, the way we've been brought up, and the way everything is, we believe that what our senses tell us is reality. You look at your bank account, it's got X number of dollars in it. You look at your stack of bills, and they demand X number of dollars. The X number of dollars demand it supersedes the X number of dollars in the bank. Therefore, you don't have enough money. Why? Because you, what, you, what you see tells you you ain't got enough. <clears throat> and it tells you that's reality. Reality is you ain't got enough. All right? But is that really reality? It is according to the census. According to the census, there's no, there's, there's no fix for it. There's no help for it. There's no change to it. That's just the way it is. You ain't got enough. All right? This makes us dependent upon our surroundings and circumstances for the information we get. Our perspective of reality is totally limited and constructed by our senses. If you hurt, then I am sick, or there's something wrong. If you, um, you know, you know the, the doctor says you got cancer or whatever, and your body hurts, then you've got cancer. Why? Because your senses tell you you do. If you don't have enough money, because you can't see enough money, then your senses tell you you don't have enough money, then you don't. Anything that the senses tell you becomes your world of reality when your sense rules. Okay? So, um, what are the limitations to this? Well, the, you know, number one, if you are sense knowledge ruled, you have the inability to ascertain reality. Your, your reality is uh, limited to your understanding of the natural world. But Jesus said, sanctify them through thy word, thy word is truth. And the word truth also means reality. Okay? And so when you're limited by your sense knowledge, when your sense knowledge is what's governing you, and listen, nobody should feel condemned because you, you, you have been sense knowledge and are currently are because we're going, to tell you, we're going to tell you what to do to get rid of that. Amen. It's just, it, it is. A fallen man is sense, now that, that's what happened to man. Man became, man didn't know he was naked until he fell. Then he became a sense knowledge ruled creature. And because he became sense, sense knowledge ruled, he acted accordingly. And, and then man began to degrade. Do you understand? Man, did you know that man was not some, we were, man was not some mugga, mugga, ugga, ugga, mba. Coming out of a cave, going, mm, mama, man, woman. He named all the animals of the earth. He was created in the image and likeness of God. The lack of intelligence or whatever came as a degrading from original creation. Hello. Man went from the zenith of spirituality and walking and communing with God to a degraded, sense-ruled creature. Hello. Well, man, he didn't discover fire. He didn't need fire. The earth was a greenhouse. The heavens were covered with moisture. 
It was when the, when the flood came that the heavens opened up and all that moisture came to the earth and flooded the earth and then receded to a certain degree. And, we, you know, and then, the, then we had all these, these wacky seasons. It was a greenhouse. It was a perfect temperature all the time. God's creation was perfect. God's creation didn't have extremes and not so. It was, fall, it was the fall that brought all that and judgment brought all that. It was not God's original intent. It was not God's original in creation. Man degraded. And the more man degraded, the more sense ruled he became, less spiritually aware he became, and became a sense ruled, governed creature. And so what he could see, what he could taste, what he could hear, what he could feel, what he could smell. So we're going to, now we're going to use the term uh, senses or sight. The King James Version in the New Testament refers to our senses as sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. While we look not at the things which are seen. These are terms that are in reference to your senses, not, not limited solely to your seeing with your natural eyes. Okay? And so man lo lost the ability to fully as ascertain reality. He limited himself to the, by the understanding of the natural world. Because of this, man believes what his senses tell him to believe. His thinking and reasoning processes are only gaining information through the senses. Thus, that is all that he has in himself to formulate his perception of reality. And because, and because of that, we become, we become so central, we become more and more carnal, more and more fleshly. Yet, on the inside, there's an abiding sense. Some, there's something more. Man yearns. We have people dabbling with the occult, dabbling with uh, realms of supernatural, dabbling in the realms of, of different religions, trying to appease and satisfy the emptiness that his senses can't lay hold of. Your senses can't grab God. Your senses can't ascertain God. In that sense, you know, in other words, your reality says, <clears throat> I remember when I was in high school, somebody, you know, our teacher been trying to be, uh, you know, say, uh, do you believe in God? Yes, I believe in God. Prove it. I can't put him in a test tube. I can't put God in a test tube and put some chemicals in there and shake it up. And then there, there's God. I can prove there's God by the, um, by the scientific methods. Scientific methods deal solely in the realm of sense knowledge. The supernatural is ex completely excluded from scientific method. So then what becomes the God of, 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 the, um, uh, of the scientific method in that sense knowledge realm? Reason. We reason out things because of what our senses tell us are there naturally. Because there is no supernatural. We begin to formulate things. We begin to create things. We begin to create theories. You leave supernatural out of it, you got to go to create. I mean, you got to go to evolution. Hello. If there is no supernatural, then it has to be evolution. There had to be a bunch of cosmic gases floating. Where'd the cosmic gases come from? Come on now. I mean, I'm telling you, I'm, these, these people, the evolutionists have more faith than I got. Are you here? You know, well, there was a big bang. You know, all these cosmic gases right here. Where did they come from? And there's a big bang and, and, and just uh, uh, slung a universe into existence. And then, you know, uh, with enough uh, hydrogen and, and whatever, we have internal combustion uh, s stars, the sun. I don't know if it's internal combustion, that, that's an engine. We have, we, have, we have a perpetuating combustion of hydrogen and whatever and making up our sun. And it, we just happen to get slung out there exactly the right distance away. And after enough time of the cosmic gases that got slung out in the certain places, spinning around long enough, an earth was formed. A planet was formed. And as a matter of fact, a whole solar system was formed. As a matter of fact, a galaxy of solar systems was formed. Woo! Man, you got some faith. Quite frankly, you got to be stupid to believe all that. No, but they, they, they believe, I mean, it's, 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 it's reason. Why? Because our senses say there are physical planets out there. There's no supernatural. 
So one day, all these cosmic energies are just kind of out there, and it, it flung out there, and it created the universe, and just happens that hours after a certain number of time, a little single-celled something or another got a little electronic discharge on it, and it came alive. And from that little electronic discharge, it began to evolve over billions of years. From a little single-cell discharge of life, you came. Here we are. Look at us. It just happened. Why? Because if you don't have the super, if your reality is natural, then you begin to reason things out and come up with formulations or come up with ideas of how things happen solely because you have limited yourself to the senses, to what your senses tells you is reality. There is no supernatural. Okay? So, um, we come to things like, where do we come from? Chance and evolution. It's not just evolution, it was chance. It just happened that, that this planet that was exactly the right distance from the sun that had water on it, you know, that could sustain life and oxygen that could sustain life and all those things that could happen had the right electronic discharge on the right uh, type of matter that created life that evolved. So we have chance and evolution. Now, you do know that the theory of evolution violates the scientific method. Now, why does it violate the scientific method? Order never comes from chaos. That's scientists tell you that. Except they say chaos created our order. Yeah, it is amazing. Order doesn't come from chaos. Yet, in this case, chaos created our order. That went over big. Okay. So it violates all that. But, we you know, forget all that. We don't, you know, when, when it comes to science and, and, and creating mantras and, you know, and, and, and preferred narratives, it doesn't matter what truth is. It just matters what you figured out that you want to say. And if you say it long enough, people believe it's true. It is still the theory of evolution. It's a theory. You know why? They can't prove it. They just sat around and went, well, you know, I think this is what happened. Now I'll, be, now, I'll be honest with you. One thing about their theory is true. There was a big bang. God said, light be, light was. Boom! There it was. He slung the universe into existence with a word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. So, so man begins to come up with things. Where did we come from? Chance and evolution. You know, how do we help people? Education and medicine, etc. Uh, how do we fill the void of the spirit of man? We just flat out deny its existence. Or try to find some other means to contact the spirit realm. Listen, don't you be playing with no Ouija board. Christians are doing stuff like Ouija boards. You want a devil? Go ahead. They'll come accommodate you. You know, Voltaire, or Voltaire, or however you would say it with a or if you're, if you're a true southern Voltaire said man has been able to measure the distance of the stars and yet he himself he has not come to know the problems that concern a man the most have been left unanswered he's not been able to find the uh, reason for his own existence and until man knows that reason he cannot know the purpose or meaning of life through the limitations of sense knowledge, man attempts to answer life's questions with answers he has gained from his senses. And since it's only part of the picture, he comes up with inaccurate and ineffective solutions or answers. Your senses say, I ain't got no money. I ain't got too many bills. Your senses say, I'm sick, gonna die. And the doctor says, there's no hope. Your senses draw a line in the sand and say, this is reality, and that's it. And that's the way it is. That's just the way it is. Now, let me tell you how flaky your senses are. You ready for this one? Your senses will say, I ain't going to believe it unless I see it. And then when you see it, it goes, I see it, but I don't believe it. Now, come on now. You know I'm telling the truth. 
running around. I just ain't going to believe this. I can see it. Then when it, then when it shows up, it goes, I, don't, I see it. I'm looking at it. I still don't believe it. That's because your senses are determined to stand its ground on the information it gets the way it gets it. You, you bring it in through your senses. It is your reality. But see, as believers, we are not to be governed by our senses. We're not to be controlled by our senses. Are you here? We're not to be limited by our senses. Now, your senses go, I can see it, I can taste it, I can hear it, I can smell it, I can touch it. That's all there is to it. And if that's, if, and that's all the information I have, and that's how I'm going to formulate my opinion about or my belief about what's real. Jeff is sitting in a chair this morning. His eyes told him it was there. When he put his hand on the back of it, his touch told him it was there. Hello? If they were brand new like they were a few years ago, you could walk in, you could have smelled them. The, the, the dyes and the stuff in them. And your smell would have told you were there. Are you here? Now, don't be licking my chairs. All right? We don't, we don't want you tasting the chairs. Hello. But the sense is to, now, if I bring Jeff in, say, take a seat, Jeff, and he sits down, he's going, his sense is telling him that chair's there. Now, let me blindfold him. Bring him in. Say, now, sit down, Jeff. What's going to tell him there's a chair there? His senses won't tell him it's there. If he can't see it, if he can't touch it, he can't, he can't know that chair is there. What's he going to have to He's going to have to trust a knowledge that came from somewhere else. What? The knowledge that I wouldn't lie to him. The knowledge that my word is, 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 my word is the reality that there's a chair there. Amen? And see, God has a word for us. God speaks words to us, praise God. And, you know, and look over at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Hallelujah. One of the four places in the Bible this particular phrase is used. It says, for we walk by faith and not by sight, or not by our senses. What is faith? Faith comes from the Greek pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S, and it's meaning belief, trust, adherence to, you know, it is faith. <coughs> we believe something. We adhere to the reality of something that we can't see. We, uh, we walk by this faith and not by our senses. In the natural realm, when we walk this planet and we walk on the earth and we're born again, we cannot look at all the things that are going on around us and go, oh my God, what am I going to do? We got to go, oh my, look what God's going to do. Amen. 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 It is not your senses that will put you over. As a matter of fact, they'll put you under. They will defeat you. Why? Because they are limited to the information that they're getting in this natural realm, and they feed that to you, and then you formulate an opinion or a belief system based on it. And it comes up short. I said it comes up short. The senses can never jump over into the next realm. We walk by faith and not by sight. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is, what? The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. My evidence of seeing things is, I can touch that chair. I can put my hand on it. I see that chair. Here I can, I can hear the sound of my fingernails scratching the material. My senses tell me that chair is there. That's all my senses can do. My senses can't tell me that, my, that Jesus purchased my healing even though my body says it's sick. My senses, as a matter of fact, will reject that Jesus bore my sicknesses. Because it feels the pain. It sees the sore. It sees the injury. It sees, it sees, it sees, it feels. And so my senses say the reality is 
you sick. But 1 Peter 2, 24 says, by his stripes ye were healed. There is a knowledge that doesn't come through my senses that can only be gained by a revealing of, by the Holy Ghost of the Word of God to your human spirit. We look at our money and we go, I ain't got enough. Stop looking at your money. So I look at what God said. But my God shall supply your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Bring the tithe and the offering into the storehouse. And prove me now here in Malachi chapter 3. And see if I'll not open unto you the windows of heaven. And King James says pour out a blessing. But the, the Greek says empty out on you a blessing. You'll not have room enough to receive. Now your senses are going, fool, you give 10%, you're going to be broker. But God's word says, tithe the 10% and you'll have more. Your senses go, I got to pay this, 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 by this time and this date. And if you give 10% of that money, well, you ain't going to have enough. But God said, bring it. God said, bring it. I said, God said, bring it. What's he going to do? He's going to open heaven's windows. And he's going to empty out a new blessings you won't have room, room enough to receive. Yeah, but I'm looking. You've got, you got to stop looking. James said the, the double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. What's that mean? You come to church, Pastor Ed, preach the glory to God. If you bring your tithe and offering, God's going to open up heaven's windows. You're going to be blessed. You go, woo! And you go home, and you got an email saying, if you don't give us some money right now, we're repossessing your car. And you're, woo! Goes, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Come on now. See, what's that? That's double-minded. Your senses got back in control. I mean, the blood ran out of your face. You got that sick feeling in your stomach because you got a piece of paper that says that 10% just cost you your car. That's what it's saying to you. Come on now. I'm going to tell glory to God. Yeah. Got the letter. Now, it says enough about your tithe, but in your brain, you go, man, if I hadn't given that 10%, if I hadn't given that $180, I'd have enough to pay that car payment. Whoa, 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 whoa. See, now you're double-minded. You're wavering. You're wavering between two opinions. Come on. I'm talking about money. I can talk about, I can talk about this about sickness or, or pain, whatever. But you're wavering now. Now, did the word of God say, bring the tithe and offering? Did the word of God say, if you do, he'll open up heaven's windows? Did it? Did it say he'll pour out a blessing or empty out of you a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive? As a matter of fact, he said, prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. He said, bring the tithe and offering and prove me now herewith. But you run home and the bank said, you ain't got enough. I'm not talking about being foolish. I'm talking about getting into faith. The bank said you ain't got enough, but God said you got more than enough. What are we going to do? Julie, what'd you do? She believed God. Can I, can I use your story? Julie sat in my office. She came to me. We were preaching, I've been preaching on a little bit about, well, not a little bit, we're preaching on money and tithing and giving. She came and sat down in the office and said, I can't afford to tithe. This is pre Larry. This is, this is BL, before Larry. Before Larry showed up. I can't afford to tithe. Let me tell you something, folks. Pastors say stuff sometimes they don't want to, have to, they don't want to say. They have to say stuff sometimes that, that their natural man wants to jump in there and be compassionate or say things because they just don't, they don't want to be you know, responsible for what happens if. And I looked at her and said, you can't afford not to tithe. Did I not tell you that? Yep. I don't know if that's what she wanted to hear or not. But that's what I told her. You can't afford not to tithe. Why? Because as long as you, you're saying I can't afford to, what you're doing is you're saying sense knowledge says that I don't have enough and I won't have enough. Therefore, you're going to live in the sense knowledge realm. 
It's going to continue to govern you. What's happening? You're, you become double-minded. <clears throat> You're trying to live in the spirit and in the sense knowledge, and you become unstable in all your ways. James. He said, James 1, 8, the double-minded man is unstable in all. Not some, not part, all of their ways. Boy, y'all getting quiet on me out there. I thought this was a Pentecostal Word of Faith Holy Ghost Church. You know I'm telling the truth. So I told you, it wasn't long. Julie came back to us and met with us again and said, well, you know what? I started tithing. Yeah, we, we know she started tithing. She said, I got more money after the tithe than I had before. When I wasn't tithing. And I'm making the same amount. And it wasn't long she got a raise. And it wasn't long she got another raise. And it wasn't long she got a promotion. And now, are you still working from home? Now she only had to drive to work. Doing the same job. She don't have to pay the gas and all that stuff to ride back and forth. Just get, get up in her bedroom uh, slippers and her pajamas and run over there to the computer and get to work. Now, if they turn the camera on, she might have to have on the right kind of shirt so it looks like at least she's dressed right. <laughs> Hallelujah. But what happened? Her senses said you can't afford to. But God has a revelation word. God has a revelation knowledge. God has something that says when the senses say you can't, God says you can. Hallelujah. And that knowledge, when you lay hold of that, supersedes your senses and takes you out of the realm of the impossible and puts you into the realm of the possible glory to God. It takes you out of the realm of not enough and puts you into the realm of more than enough. It takes you out of the realm of I can't to the realm of I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me glory to God. It takes you from the place where your body and your senses tell you and govern you and control you to where the Holy Ghost controls you and governs your life through the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My new funky hair is falling down. All right. I can feel it falling down. Hallelujah. Give me some stuff and do it. All right. Anyway. Hebrews says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of the things that your senses can't tell you. Your senses te can't tell, they can't tell you that you're well and healed by the stripes of Jesus when your body hurts. As a matter of fact, they contradict what the Bible says. Your senses contradict your bank, uh, God's blessings. Because it doesn't look like your bank account has anything. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. <clears throat> I'm going to read it, then we're going to do the Ed Taylor paraphrase version. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are unseen. For the things which are seen are temporal, and the things which are unseen are eternal. Let me give you the Ed Taylor paraphrase version. While we look not at the things that the senses tell us, but at the things that the senses can't tell us. For the things that our senses tell us are subject to change. But the things that our senses can't tell us are eternal and are reality. Your senses can't tell you that you're healed when you hurt. <coughs> your senses can't tell you you've got more than enough when your bank account's upside down to your bills. Your senses cannot bring comfort and faith in the hour of need because it's governed by the circumstances of life. But Paul quoted, Paul declared to the church at Philippi in Philippians 4.11, hallelujah. He said that I have learned however I am placed to be independent not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned that however I am placed, to be independent of the circumstances. What are the circumstances? The circumstances are the things your senses tell you. 
The circumstances will look at you and get eyeball to eyeball and toenail to toenail and tell you you're going to go under. You're not going to make it. You can't ever achieve. You can't ever get there. And the Word of God says you're more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens you. Hallelujah. The Word of God says this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Glory to God. The Word of God declares, now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Word of God says, I am persuaded. Woo! Glory to God. That neither death, nor life, nor principality, nor power, nor things present, and I'm going to leave this of them out, nor things, nor things past, nor things to come will ever separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. He will, the word of God says, he will not allow you to be tempted above that which you are able. But will with the temptation make a means of escape that you may be able to bear. Was, and he didn't say you're going to bear up under and stay there and struggle. He said you're going to make a means of escape. Paul, even talking about his thorn, said, Jesus said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength, my dunamis, my miracle power is made perfect when you are the weakest. Paul said, I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to shout when I have infirmities, when I have light, when my senses say I can't make it, when there's not enough and my senses are screaming. I'm going to rejoice. Why? That the power, the dunamis of Christ rests upon me. What happens when miracle power comes? You get miracles. I said you get miracles when miracle power comes. Glory to God. I'm preaching better than you're shouting. I should have had three runners by now. Amen. God, he is good. All the time. Hallelujah, Brother Benny. Our senses are liars. Why are they liars? Because they only declare what this world says. And they refuse to accept what God says. Let God be true. And Shambot used to say, let God be true and every man a liar. Yeah! Somebody wants to say, say, how do you determine that what the word Shabbat means in Hebrew? It means to shout. Give a shout to the Lord. Shambach. Shambach helps you remember Shabbat. Hallelujah. Brother Shambach's going home to be with the Lord. Praise God. But I am telling you this morning that we are going to become people once again who are living by the revelation knowledge. I where God reveals. Hallelujah. Where God has a word where the circumstances in life and your senses are telling you there's not an answer. There's not a way out. You can't fix it. You can't get it done. You're never going to make it. But God has a word for you. Hallelujah. God has a word in his word that speaks to that circumstance of life. Praise God. It says you're more than a conqueror. That says you win. Hallelujah. That you overcome. Glory to God. The greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world praise God the word of God has a word that lifts you up out of that place of defeat and establishes you in the place of victory praise God the word of God is the revelation from heaven that takes you from the realm of sense knowledge into the realm of revelation holy ghost knowledge that puts you and makes you a winner glory to God amen and that's why Paul said while we look not at the things that are seen Because they're a liar. Jonah, when he was in the belly of the great fish, people dispute over whether it was a whale or a big shark or if it actually happened. It happened. Jesus said it happened. So I don't care what you say. Okay? Well, I got a PhD. That's post hole digger. If you don't believe what Jesus said, you're a post hole digger. Matter of fact, go get a job doing that. You're better. You, you help society better. You'll be more meaningful if you just go do that. I've got an education. Sometimes you people are educated beyond your intelligence. I'm not against education, but when it comes contrary to the word of God, say, well, Jonah was never in a great fish belly. Jesus said he was. So now you're calling Jesus a liar. You're stupid. Hello? That's what the preachers finally said. He said, you know, that PhD, he finally figured out, it meant post hole digger. Because the post hole digger has got more sense than that. Amen. Am I right, Brother Bill? Brother Bill's got his PhD. Don't mean post-over digger for him because he believes Jesus. 
If he didn't, I'd call him a post hole digger. If he didn't believe Jesus, I would, he wouldn't be back there anyway. But he does. Hallelujah. But there is a word. There are words from heaven, the Bible. Things that God speaks to us that line up with the Bible. That your senses cannot grasp. How can I be healed when I hurt? Because you believe that you receive what Jesus did for you. Your senses can't agree with that. But your knowledge of, that comes out of Revelation can. Abraham changed his name from Abram to Abraham. From Abram to the father, Abraham, the father of a multitude. Without the seed being produced. It was later that Isaac came. At least three months, because this time next year, before Sarah got pregnant, she laughed about it. She, 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 she wouldn't look at whatever kind of looking glass water they had and said, I'm prune womb Sarah. Sarah, I ain't, I ain't getting pregnant. She got pregnant. It ceased to be without her after the manner of women. I mean, she's gone through menopause. She ain't got no womb that's going to produce nothing. She ain't getting artificially inseminated. She is dried up. Hello. I mean, I know it's kind of graphic, but let's face it. Her womb looked like a prune. 90 years old. But she got pregnant. I said, she got pregnant. Uh-huh. But the census said it's impossible. The census tell you today that whatever your circumstance is, but Paul said, I have learned to be independent of those circumstances. What does it mean independent of them? They don't control me. They don't control my belief system. They don't control where my trust is. They don't control where my faith is. They don't control any of that. What's controlling it, Paul? Where is it coming from? I put my trust in God. He told those men on that ship that night. He said, the angel of the Lord stood beside me and said, I've given all those that trust. Wherefore, brethren, I believe God. Oh, my. Isn't it good to get to the place when the circumstances say no and you turn around and say, but I believe God. I believe God. And then the answer is manifest. Your senses couldn't deal with it. Your senses said, like Peter, James, John, and the other nine on the boat with Jesus going over. Master, carest thou not that we perish? Woke him up out of a good sleep. Well, the boat was sinking. He said, let us go over to the other side. The senses said, we're going under. He said, we're going to the other side. We already, knew, we already know this. He can walk on water. I'm guessing he could sleep on water. He's going to the other side, and he's going to the other side to sleep is what he's planning on doing. He gets up, rebukes the storm. And looks at them and says, oh, ye of little faith. Let me tell you what he said. You bunch of sense rule people. You looked at the water and you got all uptight. My word said we're going over to the other side. Now, Peter was double-minded. How do you know? Master, if that's you, bid me come. Come. He got out started walking on the water. But then he started looking at the waves. He started listening to the wind. He started seeing the seas. And he began to sink. Now, one minute, he's walking in the revelation of that word come. But his sense knowledge jumped back up, and what happened? He became unstable. He sank. But he did walk back. Jesus didn't drag Peter back to the boat. Come on, Peter. You lack a faith rascal. Come on. Peter's back there like you're hanging onto a ski rope. No, that's not how he's going back to the boat. Anybody ever gone water skiing? Flipped over forward and forgot to let go. And it's like, hey, stupid, let go. But you're not going to get your feet back around and get your skis up, okay? You're going you're gonna to drown yourself, stupid. I've done it. They're going, let go. And I'm thinking, stop. 
You're not going to win that whizzing war. If you're the one hanging on to the rope. Y'all hear you going home. We are ruled. We are to be ruled by the revelation of what God says to us. Out of his written word, number one, and out of spoken words that line up with the written word. If it's a spoken word that don't line up with this, it ain't from God. Yeah, but they said, yea, thus saith the Lord, my child, and I am I'm the prophet and, or prophetess so-and-so. If your prophet or prophetess so-and-so don't line up with the Bible, they are a prophet of Baal. Hello. They're not the prophet of the Lord. I believe in prophecy. I believe God uses men and women to speak words. I believe God uses people in the gifts of the Spirit. But they better line up with his written word. Amen. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.